Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will address frequently asked questions on Python for DevOps. There are four frequently asked questions. Number one, is Python required for DevOps? Number two, how much Python is required for DevOps? Number three, what are the tasks that involve in Python scripting in a DevOps engineer's life? Number four, that is, if all of these things are true, if one, two and three are true, where should I learn Python from? What is the structure to learn Python from a DevOps engineer point of view? So I'll answer all of these questions with detailed answers. So please watch it till the end. Let's get started with question number one. Is Python required? This question is asked in different ways. Some people ask is scripting required. Some people might ask you is Python required, shell scripting required. Let me answer all of them in a very detailed way. As a DevOps engineer, yes, you should have knowledge of scripting. Now, what I would recommend, because as you start your DevOps engineering journey, you start with Linux. You start with creating instance on a uh, cloud platform. If we talk about AWS, to start with anything, you would create a EC2 instance. You would learn the concept of virtualization and you will start playing on that EC2 instance. So when you start playing on that, you already know some shell commands. You use SSH to log into it. You know to how to create files in it. You know how to create directories, how to switch between the directories. So some or the other way, you already know some shell commands. And when you know some shell commands, it is easy for you to start learning shell scripting because shell scripting is a way of structuring the shell commands, putting them in sequential order and executing them as a file. So better start with shell scripting and then move to Python because there are things that you can achieve using shell scripting as a DevOps engineer on your day to day basis. And many DevOps engineers use shell scripting even they know Python, but when there are very simple tasks, let's say you just want to understand about the resources of an instance. You just want to understand how much CPU is consumed, how much RAM is consumed and how many resources are consumed in different specifications on an EC2 instance. It is very easy to fire a shell script and get that information rather than writing a Python script for it. So in such cases, you still use shell scripting on a day to day basis. So learn shell scripting first and even during your interviews, they will give you an option. Do you want to write in shell scripting that is bash scripting or Python scripting? So get good with shell scripting first, then move to Python. Now you can ask the second question that is okay. Uh, if shell scripting is already there, then why I need to learn Python or how Python is involved in a DevOps engineer life. So let's understand this question in very simple way with example. So I told you using shell scripting, you can achieve a lot of things, but sometimes there are things which cannot be done with shell scripting. For an instance, let's say you were task is to take a look at S3 bucket. Whenever your S3 bucket is created on a AWS platform, what you need to do as soon as the S3 bucket is created, you will understand that a bucket is created and you will verify if the public access of the bucket is enabled or disabled. If the public access is enabled, it is against your company rules. So you want to send notification to the user who has created it. That means you want to send a mail notification to the person. Now you can achieve this task using shell scripting as well, but it is very complicated. Whereas if you move towards uh, scriptings like Python, what you can do is you can use the AWS serverless function that is Python and using Python, you can achieve this in very, very simple way because there is Lambda function. You can write this entire code in Lambda function and trigger this using a cloud watch. So what happened here? You have choose Python over shell scripting because Python can achieve this task in a better way. Whereas when we were talking about node health status, I choose shell scripting over Python because this task is achieved in very simple way using shell scripting. So understand 
that there are some basic level things that you can do on a day to day basis using shell scripting. But when it comes to dealing with serverless functions, when it comes to dealing with APIs, when it comes to traversing JSONs, okay, and reading them as dictionary, performing some iterations and actions, okay, in for these kind of activities, you would use Python. So shell scripting is required and Python is required, but start with shell scripting. Okay, do not start both of them parallelly. Complete shell scripting to some extent where you understand, okay, what are some basic scripts that I can write? And once you feel comfortable about shell scripting, move towards Python. So this is question number two. Now, if you move to question number three, that is how much Python is required. And this is very, very important to understand because Python has its arms stretched in different fields. Today, Python is used in machine learning. Today, Python is used in AI. Today, Python is used in data analytics. Uh, whatever field that you talk about, Python is almost there. And in DevOps engineering, there is Python. So how do you differentiate between this? How much Python should I learn? So for that, what you need to do is, for example, when you are following my DevOps course, I've done some demos using Python when we were talking about the AWS DevOps zero to hero. Similarly, start researching on the day to day tasks of DevOps engineers. For example, one thing that I've told you, let's say you want to write serverless functions. Python is required because shell scripting is not supported in the serverless functions. If you are writing a Lambda function, you have to write it in Node.js. You have to write it in Python, Go language or supported programming languages. So the scope of serverless functions, it can be cloud cost optimization. I'm giving you scenarios also. When you want to do cloud cost optimization, you would prefer Python. When you want to write serverless functions, you would prefer Python. When you want to write some Boto3 scripting to interact with AWS APIs, you would use Python scripting. Right. So these are the tasks. And once you understand the tasks of DevOps engineers, you will know where should I stop? Like I don't have to learn about extensively about pandas or NumPy if I am a DevOps engineer, right? Because those things I might not use that frequently or I might not use at all. Whereas I want to learn about Python modules such as JSON. I want to learn Python uh, basic data types such as strings. I want to learn about dictionaries, how to convert JSON into dictionary, how to traverse uh, through a dictionary once it is converted, how to make an API call. Okay. Let's say there is a website. How do I make an API call to it? Or when there is an API to put it better, actually when there is an API, how do I interact with it? Example, you have github.com, you have Jira. As a DevOps engineer, let's say you are given a task that Whenever a pull request is created and someone comments on the pull request saying slash Jira, then you need to write a Python script and this Python script should look at the github.com and whenever it finds a comment called slash Jira, Python should take that information and pass it to a Jira ticket. It has to create a Jira ticket. So you are talking to GitHub APIs and you're also talking to the Jira API. You are receiving payload from github.com and performing some actions on the payload and creating a ticket on Jira. So here what I'm doing, I'm making API calls. I'm traversing JSON. I'm converting that into a dictionary and on dictionary, I'm performing some basic operations. So these are some of the things that you use Python for. When you understand the task, you understand where should you stop. So I've given you some examples. Probably for writing Boto3 uh, related modules or talking to the AWS APIs. So learn about some basic uh, operations such as how to create API request, how to get the information from one website, how to traverse that information, learning about some basic data types. These are some of the tasks that you need to perform on Python. So this is where you will learn Python from and this is where you will stop Python. And how would you get this information? Is there any website or is there any training material that explains you that this is where you have to start Python from and this is where you have to end learning Python. Unfortunately, at this point of time, I did not find anything. I was doing research. 
I was searching uh, through the internet if there is any proper thing, but there was no proper training material which explains Python for DevOps. There are so many materials for Python. Today, if you want to learn Python, I think there are millions of websites where they will explain how to learn Python, but all of them are focused on the coding or programming point of view, where they will teach you right from the data types, right from variables of Python, but they will take a different track. They will not provide you any examples with respect to DevOps. When they're talking about a string, probably they're talking from programming point of view. When they're talking about dictionary, they will provide you some basic examples, how to create a dictionary, how to put some values into the dictionary, key value pairs. But when you are learning from a DevOps engineer point of view, you will not correlate. Why will I use dictionary in a DevOps engineer's day-to-day -day life? Why will I use a tuple? Where will I use a JSON in the DevOps engineer day-to-day -day life? Such training materials are not available. And I promise you, I'll make that uh, training material. I don't know if I'll be doing as a next course or I don't know if I'll be doing that after Azure DevOps. But right now, in my mind, I have these two things. One is Azure DevOps. Second thing is Python. Depending upon the response, depending upon my research, what is more required, I would be doing a series on that. And whenever I'm doing this Python for DevOps, I'll make sure that we will cover a lot of scenarios and I'll explain the real life use cases of Python for DevOps engineering. Now, I hope you found this video useful and I have shared as much of information as possible, but start with shell scripting. This is something that I wanted to tell you. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I will keep updating this space Python for DevOps and I'll make sure everyone who is watching our channel Whenever I make this series, you learn Python and you will become an expert in Python for DevOps. Take care, everyone. Thank you so much for watching it and see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.